Setting audio markers within Playout 1 is very, very simple. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. Now, markers are really, really important when it comes to the operation of Playout 1. If it's the extra marker, it's going to tell the next item when to play. If it's the intro marker, it's going to give information to the person controlling Playout 1 when the vocals kick in. And the trim in is very important as well because that's where the file starts playing. So let's open up a file and let's have a look at setting the intro marker. This is where the vocal kicks in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mute the volume a little bit because YouTube will take us down if it's too loud. So here we go. I'm going to listen to the audio and I'm going to click with my mouse here to find the intro. And when I hear Niall start singing, I'm going to hit the set button. Okay, there we go. So I kind of missed it, but to verify, I can double click the intro button and it's going to play where that marker's from. Now I'm going to just adjust the intro here by using the little nudge buttons. And then I'm going to verify by pressing intro to take me back there until I get the perfect intro marker. We can even zoom in for extra precision and move the intro marker by just dragging it like so. I think that's going to be perfect. Next, we're going to go set the hook. So the hook is kind of the chorus of the song. So I'm going to zoom along here and find where I think the chorus starts. And then to set the hook, I'm just going to hit set next to the hook in. And then when I think the hook is over, I'm going to hit set on the hook out. And to verify, we just click on the hook in button and it's going to play that for us. Fantastic. And uh, let's just double verify. Very useful indeed. So that's going to be very useful to you if you use the hook feature within Playout 1 to play the hooks of the up and coming songs in the log. So we're happy with setting intros. We're happy with setting the hook in, the hook out. Let's take a look next at what the trim in function does. So let's pretend you've got some silence on the front of a piece of audio. If you don't set the trim in, that silence is going to play and then the audio is going to kick in. Clearly that's bad. We can move the trim in to counteract that and literally start the file from where the audio starts. No need to export it out to a digital audio uh, editing piece of software and edit it. You can literally move the trim in. We can also use the trim in in another way. If there's a little bit of something on the front of a song that we don't want to play and we want to start the song from another point, then we can do that also. So using the example I'm about to show you, this Lizzo song has a little bit of music on the front but we want to start it from there, from that beat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up and we're going to just have a little listen here. We're going to move the playhead to where we want it to start. And that's where we want it to start. So let's go ahead and let's zoom in. And we're going to literally click where we want to set the trim in. I think about there. We're going to, uh, oops, wrong button from me. Don't hit, don't hit trim in. That takes you back to the trim in where it's currently set. We need to hit the set button. So let's go and do that now. We're going to move the mouse back to just there. Hit set. We're catching a little bit of the audio there. So I'm just going to really zoom in and I'm going to move this now. I'm going to drag it back. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Happy with that. So that's how the trim in works. Finally, in this video, we're going to see how the extra works. Now, the extra is the red marker you'll see in the edit audio window, and that helps play out one when to play the next item in the log. Very, very important. Now, usually when you import songs into play out one, we set this automatically for you. You can see here, here's my extra right on the end. However, if it wasn't, we can, again, do exactly the same as we've been doing with the trim in, the intro, the hook in, the hook out. We can drag the marker, we can set it, and then we can listen again. So if you're finding some of your songs are firing the next element in the log a little bit too quickly, then go and adjust your extra. The final marker I'm going to talk about today is the early extra. And this is really useful for when you're using a piece of production and it's been marked as an oversweep. If you mark a piece of production as an oversweep, if there is an intro on a song, after it in the log, Playout 1 will automatically overlay the two so you get this lovely crunch and roll effect. Where this isn't good is if you've got, for example, a music promo. Let's say the music promo is 20 seconds, the first 15 seconds has music clips in it, and then the last five seconds is dry. We would not want the music clips to overlap with the song intro that was next in the log. That would sound terrible. So what we'll do is we'll set a early extra 
at the end of the music clips, which is 15 seconds. And then what Playout 1 will do is it will commit the oversweep function when the early extra is hit, meaning that you don't get that horrible clash. The next song overlaps with the dry VO at the end of the music promo. So that's how we set markers in Playout 1. If you'd like to find out more or have any questions, please do not hesitate to email support at air.com.